What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Acre Scuba and Marina and this is my own response video to our video on dive planning where we told you that there was an Easter egg in our chart and we were hoping some people would call us out on it, which they did, and they actually found the Easter egg very, very quickly. Uh, just a quick recap, what we did was a series of videos on dive planning and we just picked a, a common depth that a lot of people want to go to. We picked the best blend for it, we picked the, uh, the size cylinder based off a of sack rate, which one should be used, and of course that was based off my sack rate. But during that chart that we had up here, we created, or we didn't create an Easter egg, but the Easter egg kind of presented itself, and we were hoping people would actually see it so that we could show you why uh, it is what it is. And so just to point it out real quick, this right here is what we're looking for. The Easter egg is right there. And so if we do a dive to say 100 feet, and we use 36% nitrox, if you will, or enriched air nitrox, or no two blend, no matter whose tables you use, no matter the math, and I'm gonna show you the math behind it, it puts you above a 1.45 partial pressure, and we typically wanna leave that at a 1.4 or lower. However, with the SSI tables, it puts us at a 1.52 partial pressure. Everybody else, or all the other agencies that we train through say 1.45, 1.45, 1.45. And if I show you here, even doing the math alone, it says 1.452. And if you're interested in being able to determine what your partial pressure of O2 at any given depth is, all you have to do is take your depth in atmospheric pressure, so we're using 100 foot of depth or 30 meters of depth, which is 4.03 atmospheres, and you simply times it by the blend that you're gonna be breathing, which is 36%. Now you gotta to remember to put your decimal in there, which is 0.36. So take 4.03 and times it by 0.36, and it comes up with a partial pressure of 1.45. So that's the math there behind it. And if you're interested in the magic circle, just simply click up here, and you can watch the link, or watch the video on how to do the magic circle. Uh, but however, let's take a look at several sets of tables and see why this one comes up a little bit different. And I think it's going to shock you in the end when you see the reason behind it. It's a very simple reason, and it goes all the way back to your open water class on how to read a set of dive tables. And, and I think you'll see that it's, it's not nothing um, too difficult here. But I've got a set of tables here, and this is just from another agency that we train through as well. Um, and it's, it's simply their Enriched Air 36 tables here. And hopefully the camera will zoom in for me and focus. But if I, if I go over here to 100 feet, up top here, you can see there's 100 feet. And directly above it, and I'm not sure the camera will, will focus, but directly above it, it tells me what my partial pressure of O2 is at 100 feet using 36%, and simply says 1.45. So that table matches up with the math. Let's look at a, another agency that, that we trained through as well, and let's see here, and of course I'm using the 36% table as well, and if I come over to the feet or meters, you can do this metric or imperial, either one, but if I come down under feet to 100 feet, and I zoom over here, you'll see where it says, 1.45 partial pressure of O2. So it's pretty consistent as well. So now let's just see why SSI is a little bit different. And it's a very simple reason here, guys. One cool thing about SSI tables that I really like, Air, NOAA 1, NOAA 2, they're all on the same set of tables, so it's very easy to use. Um, of course, we, we blow these up for, for classroom purposes as well. But if I use Enriched Air 36, and I go down to 100 feet, I don't see 100 feet. It's not even on the table. So we have to go all the way back to Open Water 101. What do you do if you don't see your number on a set of dive tables? Well, we round up. If our depth's not on there, we round up. If our bottom time's not on there, we simply round up to the next greatest number. So with that being said, and, and using that basic rule, using Enriched Air 36 to 100 feet, which would actually round up to 106, we can clearly see our partial pressure of 1.52. So let's do the math at 106 feet just to see if it shows up at a 1.52. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna draw another magic circle. All right, and it's just basically a T formula is all it is. I'm gonna use 0.36 and I'm gonna put a depth of 106 feet. Okay, and we understand that we're only going to 100 feet, but if you plan using the tables, this is how you're gonna have to plan with it. And I'll do the math here on my calculator. Hopefully you can see it. 
Do 106, we gotta convert that over to atmospheric pressure. So divide it by 33. All right, we're gonna add one to it. That's 4.21 atmospheres. So I'm gonna write that here, 4.21 atmospheres. All right, and then all you gotta do is times it by your blend. So 4.21 times 0.36 comes up to 1.515. We're gonna round that up 1.52, all right? So the math actually lines up with the table. There, there's no wrong math, there's no wrong science, or no wrong table, it all lines up. Now, once again, we're simply using the table to plan with because it's there for us. We don't have to do the math, we can use the table. And yes, I understand we're only going to 100 feet, but if you're planning with the tables, you simply follow the tables. It's a real simple, easy problem to handle. Um, I do want to take a second here and talk about using different sets of tables. We train through five different agencies, guys. As you can see, I've got a whole list of tables here that we train through. Um, and most training agencies will have not only an air table, they'll also have at least two different types of nitrox tables. Even SSI has three different types of tables. They have an air table, a nitrox or NOAA 1, nitrox 32, and NOAA 2, nitrox 36. They have three different sets of tables, um, and all the agencies that we train through have multiple sets of tables to use. So what if you're diving with a diver uh, from a different training agency? Maybe I'm an SSI diver and I'm diving, say, with a, a, a NAWI diver or whatnot. How, how do we know which set of tables to use? It's a real simple answer. You use the set of tables that you trained on. So don't be using other agencies' tables that you've never trained on. If you're interested in using their tables, maybe they give you more time or maybe they're more conservative, simply get trained. It's no different. When a student buys a dive computer, we sit down with them for at least 30 minutes. We show them how to set it up. Uh, if they want to take a computer class, we'll sit down for a solid hour or so and show them how to plan dives, log dives with that computer because they may not have trained on the computer that they used during class. So we want to make sure that they're adequately prepared to use that piece of equipment when they go underwater. Dive tables are absolutely no different. I give every single student of mine that comes through the door the option to learn from each set of tables. So after they're certified through their respected agency that they signed up to learn through, we sit down with them and if they want to learn this table or this table or this table, then we simply teach it because we teach through those agencies as well. And that kind of gives them more tools for their toolbox. So going back to my question that I asked, how do you know which set of tables to use if you and your dive buddy who was trained through a different agency are planning dives together? Well, it's simple. Use the most conservative one. You plan yours, he plans his, and then your dive plan is based off the most conservative one or whichever one you guys want to use. Just please make sure you're adequately trained to use that set of tables before you go out and plan dives. Guys, I hope you found this video interesting. It wasn't nothing major. There was an Easter egg. It was something that we, we wasn't expecting to find when we uh, made the previous videos. However, it was there, and we just wanted to show people that, or we wanted to tell people more so that dive theory is simply that. It's simply dive theory. Do I feel that if you go over a 1.4 partial pressure of O2 that you're automatically going to you know, develop oxygen toxicity? Well, I can't say yes and I can't say no simply because it's dive theory in general. Do I feel that if you overshoot your no decompression limit by more, you know, one minute, is it automatically going to put you into decompression? Well, according to the chart, obviously not because some charts or, or some tables are more conservative next, but I can't say yes, I can't say no. You know, your body, every diver's body is a little bit different. Our susceptibility to decompression uh, sickness is a little bit different based off our body's makeup. Uh, you know, are we tired? You know what? So everybody's a little bit different. I can't say necessarily this is going to be safe for you to use. This is going to be safe for you to use. What I can say is to be the safest diver you can, make sure you're only using the tables that you were trained on until you get adequately trained to use another set of tables. And guys, I'll tell you right now, they all read the same. The, the information you get may be different, but the process to read the tables are is pretty much the same. Table one tells you depth, time, pressure group. Table two tells you pressure group, surface interval, pressure group. Table three tells you depth, residual nitrogen, adjusted no decompression limit, 
And of course, we resort back to table one again to plan the actual dive for any consecutive dive. So they're not very hard, but please sit down with your instructor or an instructor from the agency that you're wanting to use their tables, and please get trained properly before you go off and use those tables. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it interesting. If you got any questions, please put it down in the comment section below. Guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.